the objective of this video is to discuss about the properties of discriminant and its application. Okay. Now, this is called a quadratic formula. This is called or well known as the quadratic formula. Okay, so if you have a quadratic equation and uh, you can you can uh, factorize or you can find the solution of a quadratic equation in different ways but uh, at times you can't factorize or you can't find the roots uh, by uh, factoring uh, the quadratic equation so this is a formula uh, where you should be knowing a quadratic equation the general form of a quadratic equation is y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. So, this is a general form. Any quadratic equation can be, a general form is like this. So, where a is the coefficient of x squared, b is the coefficient of x and c is the constant. And if you use this formula, you can find the root of any quadratic equation. Now, you may ask what is this discriminant? Now, discriminant is this uh, whole thing of b squared minus 4ac. This is called the discriminant. Now, discriminant, I think, has come from the word discriminate, okay? And this, this whole thing or square root of b squared minus 4ac is also in some books called delta. In short, if you don't want to write the whole thing, you also, in, in place of b squared minus 4ac, you can write the Greek letter delta. So I'm not, I'm not going to use delta. Uh, okay. Now, why is it called discriminant? Because this decides the nature of root. So I've drawn <coughs> three uh, parabolas, or any quadratic equation will end up uh, to be a parabola. So there are three possibilities. Now, A, B, C, if they are real numbers, then B squared minus 4 is here would be a real number. And square root of b squared minus 4 is would also be a real number. Not always though. Okay. So, here yeah, there are three possibilities that this number, whatever that number is, either greater than 0 or equal to 0 or less, or less than 0. So, there are only three ways in which a number, suppose if any number a is given, if a is given, you can always say a is either equal to 0 sorry, a is, if a is a number, you can all surely see that a is 0 or a is less than 0 or a is greater than 0. There are no other possibilities of a real number to be other than this. So, we are talking about real numbers. So, in real numbers, a number can either be e less than 0, uh, equal to 0 or greater than 0. So, this is a real number and if it is a real number, it has either greater than 0, equal to 0, or less than 0. Okay, so if it is greater than 0, the parabola will have two roots. It will intersect your x axis at two points. I'll write in short. Uh, this, in this case, this graph tells me this has two roots or two solutions. Now, this is when it is a perfect square. So, again, I am not going into that. I do not have the time for that. This, when b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, you will have one root, only one root. Or in other books, they may say the unique root. This is a technical word, unique root. That means the parabola will intersect the x-axis only once or pass through the x-axis only once. And this is the case. Now, this is a case from where you get the complex numbers when you come to year 13 and when you learn calculus. The whole topic of calculus is based on, or complex number is based on this simple fact when b squared minus 4ac or square root of b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. So, there we say there are no roots. So, in real numbers, it is not possible to find root of a quadratic equation if b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. The reason being, you can't find in real numbers the square root of a negative number. Suppose if someone is asking you what is square root of minus 16, you can say it's not possible in real numbers or undefined in 
real numbers. So, undefined in real numbers, undefined in R. Okay, so I'm not going into that. So I've taken three examples. This is an example where you have two roots. Exactly. I mean, this is a general uh, form. I'll show you this on a calculator. Now, if you find b squared minus 4ac in this case, let us do that. So, b squared, your a is, your a is 2, your b is negative 7, and c is 3. So, b squared would be 49 minus 4 times 2 times 3, which is 49 minus 4 times 2 is 8 times 4 times 2 is 8 times 3 is 24. Now, this is greater than 0. So, it will have two roots. Now, here your a is 4, b is 4, and c is 1. So, what will be b squared minus 4ac? In this case, it will be b squared, which is 16, minus 4 times 4 times 1, which is a 0. So, in this case, you will find this is a perfect square. Okay, or this will have only one root. And here, your a is 2, your b is negative 1, and c is 8. So, in this case, b squared minus 4ac, 4ac would be 1 minus 4 times 2 times 8, which is 1 minus 8 times 8 is 64, and this is less than 0. So, I'll show you this examples to start with, let us type in this equation, which is 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. So, here you will have two roots. So, these are the two roots. Now, though you may ask, this is not drawn to this equation. So, here what is the focus is, we are interested in two roots. So, this will have two roots. That is what we say. Now, if you graph this, Say the equation was 4x squared plus 4x, 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. Okay, and it will exactly pass through. It's, so let me make the scale a bit better to see. So, so here is only one root. Okay, if you go G solve root, it's only one root of negative 0 0.5. You will not have any other root. Okay, and finally. If you type in this equation, which is 2x squared minus x plus 8, so you can't even see the parabola. I'll make it standard, then you can see that. So, this is the parabola, so let me scroll up. So, this is, so if you go G sol and root, there are no roots, not found in real numbers. Of course, in complex numbers, you can find the root though. But uh, you'll learn that later. Okay. Now, based on this, so these are the three facts you need to remember. If b squared minus 4ac uh, is uh, actually the square root should not come. Okay. I didn't want to draw the square root. Okay. I should let me write this properly. If b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero, then this is the two roots, and in this case, without the square root. Of course, square root k. If equal to zero, uh, then you got one root, and if b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, then you'll have no roots. Okay. So I didn't want to show I put the square root. I don't know how I wrote it. Okay. So let's look at this question. The question is: the equation 3x squared minus 4x plus q has two real roots. Okay, that means it has got two roots in simple language. So, this means, so let me write, let me use a different color. So, two roots or two real roots implies b squared minus 4ac is, let me write that properly, b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0. This is, this is from this figure, or from this fact. If this is, if b squared minus 4ac, then two roots. So, conversely, if two roots, you can say b squared minus 4ac is greater than 
0. So let me write what is a, what my a is 3, my b is negative 4 and my c is q. So therefore I can say uh, negative 4 squared minus 4 times 3 times q, am I right? Yeah, is greater than 0. Okay, so what happens? So this is 16 minus 12p, 12q is greater than 0. So if you add 12q, if you add 12q to this side, you can also add 12q to this side. So this becomes, this and this gets cancelled, q is greater than 12q. So 16 is greater than 12q. Now I can divide both sides by q. If you divide this side by, sorry, if you divide this side by 12, if you divide this side by 12, you can also divide this side by 12. So 12 and 12 gets cancelled. So this implies, this is, you can divide both by 4. So this is 4 thirds, 4 over 3 is greater than q, which implies q has to be less than 4 thirds. So if q is less than 4 thirds, then you'll have two roots. So let me, let us check the answer. Now what does that mean? If q, suppose this is 4 thirds, that means what they're saying is q should be less than 1 and 1 third. So let us say, let us take the negative case. If q is 2, what will happen? Let us take q is equal to 2. Will it not have two roots? So we are going the negative way. We're taking q as 2. So let us delete it, 3x squared minus 4x plus 2, what will happen, okay, it has no roots here, but what if, suppose we let us take a positive case, is q should be less than 1 and 1 thirds, so q can be 1, okay, q, if q is 1, is less than 1 and 1 third. So let us put q as 1. So let us scroll this. Uh, delete and put 1 there and see what happens. Yeah, you got so g sol root. This is one root and this is the other root. Okay, hopefully uh, this video has been helpful. Uh, see you in the next one.